Back with Morris Bates, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner used to call him the great pretender for his Elvis act. You saw a little bit of it right there. And he appeared as a singing guest on shows like Merv Griffin and Dick Cavett. He just published an autobiography entitled Morris as Elvis, the world's greatest Elvis impersonator. I mean, from that clip, you, you really not nailed it. I mean, you looked, sounded exactly like him. I wouldn't even know that was you. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was wondering, are we playing the wrong clip there? That, I mean, that's really incredible. So you, you got this act down here in Canada, traveling around, and had your sights set on, on Las Vegas, really. Um, how did you end up down there? Well, we um, basically were burning ourselves out in Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we were back and forth, back and forth. And uh, um, I'd, um, I had a manager by the name of Dennis Compo, who was like my first real manager. And uh, he hooked up with another guy by the name of Richard Chung. They were partners in Compo Chung Associates. And uh, both of them managed me. Richard uh, ended up managing me in, in, in the American uh, job, uh, mm -hmm. in the performance down there. Uh, but Dennis is the one I started with. And uh, in those days, like, um, the American acts wanted to come to Canada. And so if, if, if Dennis and right. Richard booked them into Canada, uh, they, but they didn't, we didn't have the kind of acts that were there because the bands up here, uh, with, you know, they were most rock bands. Right. Well, let, let me ask you, though, because when, once you did get down there, I mean, how, how did the audience react to you? Um, incredible. Yeah. Uh, I was, we, we swapped, uh, the agency booked me on Seattle. Uh, they had all the connections. My first job in the United States was playing at the Playgirl Club in Anaheim, which is right next to uh, Disneyland, just down the street from Disneyland, run by Playgirl Club. And uh, I was really nervous about it. And, uh, so uh, I couldn't believe it. And when I hit that stage, it was just like, it was like I was Elvis. And this was, and, and, and it, unfortunately, the, well, that was where I was performing at in the Playgirl. And we showcased it to the Asian, for the people who were booking Asia, uh, agents that would book the United States and also Las Vegas. And they were they were they were, had come in. So that whole two weeks we were there, or two or three weeks, what it was, um, we were showcasing the act basically for Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And we went up to Las Vegas. We looked at several rooms, and um, we came back. And I was finishing the engagement, and we just finished it. I think it was on a Monday, and I think that was that on Tuesday. And everything went crazy. Literally, it was just like. Wow, you know, it's like, uh, I mean, you so you really filled a void there. People wanted Elvis, they needed Elvis, and, yeah. and you you stepped in. Well, they, they felt that at the time, because Elvis's uh, shows were so long, like two years before he even played right. in Las Vegas, so they felt that um, the overflow crowd would be excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, so they couldn't get in, they would come to see me, and that that was the thing that was set up. But we had an open-ended contract, and as soon as uh, uh, Elvis passed away. Um, Asia signed had signed it already, so Las Vegas wanted us there, but we had to go to Asia for about six months. Mm. When I came back, there was like 850 Elvis impersonators, you know. But uh, they, uh, we came back to Canada real quick, done a couple months, and then we opened in uh, Las Vegas. Well, it's an incredible story and a lot more to tell. We're going to try to get you back on another time, but uh, thanks for joining us. For sure, thank you. The name of the book, again, is Morris as Elvis, the world's greatest Elvis impersonator. You can pick it up at bookstores everywhere. Let us know what you think about the guests we've had on tonight's show, or send us a topic idea. We'll tell you how in a moment.